What's up my dear boys and girls, it's your Ranger Boy here and welcome to a rather interesting video because it does seem like that despite Ash's adventure coming to a quote unquote conclusion, a lot of fans felt indifferent in terms of his ending. Some people think that it was a good ending, some people think that it was underwhelming at best and an undeserving ending at worst. And to be frank, even I don't know how to truly feel about this ending. Some people in the fanbase even discuss how the ending of the XYZ anime felt more like a more satisfying ending compared to the one the special gave us. And that for many fans, this was the point where they stopped watching the anime altogether. And that really made me think about how XYZ ended and what happened afterwards. So in today's video, we are going to answer one question. Was the ending of XYZ actually the true ending of the Pokemon anime? So if you want to know more, then grab some popcorn, grab some cookies and let's do this. So the first thing we have to tackle is the ending itself. First, let's take a look at the ending of the XYZ anime itself and I can honestly see why people think that it was a good ending. We had a lot of emotions in the episode itself. We had the kissing scene, which back then just literally broke the internet. I mean, seriously, I still remember how this moment hit 1 million views within like two days by the time it got uploaded onto the platform. It was that crazy. Anyway, we have to talk about one scene in specific which is how they ended Ash's XY saga. We see him arriving at Palatown and as soon as he's entering his home, the camera moves away from him towards the night sky with the ending quote saying, end to our own way. Normally when Ash does make a transition from one generation to another, there's a to be continued or a new beginning quote, ending the final episode of each gen. And more than often, there is also a visual transition. For example, Ash changing his clothes, or talking about the new Pokemon and the new region, or even about to enter the new region. Even the Diamond and Pearl ending, which could also be considered as a very open ending, even that had an indication that Ash's journey will continue. But as you can see, XYZ's ending was so much more different, and in a way, it felt like an almost poetic conclusion towards not only the Gen 6 anime, but also just for Ash as a whole. And especially in hindsight, we can really see the ending of the Pokemon anime of old, because soon after that, everything changed. Which of course leads us to number 2, the aftermath of the XYZ anime. Now we have to talk about what happened afterwards, and just from a visual aspect alone, so much has changed. The art style and animation difference between XY and Sun and Moon was basically like comparing apples to oranges. It was so drastic and so different that many fans and even longtime fans of the series answered back by mass exiting the Gen 7 anime. But if you thought that visual changes changes alone weren't enough, fans also had to deal with content changes that both Sun and Moon and Journeys did throughout the last few years. They changed the overall group dynamic from a typical 3 to 4 member group to either a 6 people group or just a group of 2. Both Sun and Moon and Journeys also heavily relied on slice of life episodes instead of focusing on the more action and adventure based ones. And Sun and Moon even went so far to change the direction of the anime into a more comedy based one, with a lot of comedy within the episodes and the now infamously known comedic facial expressions, which luckily, Journeys for the most part stopped doing. It's also interesting to point out that Gen 6 was the last time Ash ever challenged for gym badges, which in a way was natural in Gen 7 since we had the Island Trials instead, which is why many of us were eagerly looking forward for Gen 8 since this was also the official return of gym battles. Well, that's what we thought, but sadly, as we all know by now, Journeys totally neglected the gym leader format and also just Gen 8 as a whole, and instead was using the Pokemon World Champion championships format as a new goal for Ash. Speaking of getting badges to enter the league, Sun and Moon indeed was the season where Ash chasing a league title officially ended, which a lot of people also have seen as a tradition breaker. And even though it had to end one day, fans even till this day are under the impression that the league chase should have ended with either the Diamond and Pearl anime or the XY anime. A very minor but also very important change was that XY was the very last time where the main characters were featured in their own dedicated movies, because after that, we had these new movies starring an alternate version of Ash and his continuation wasn't connected to the current timeline of our Ash at all. The last but also most important change that happened after the end of XY was the concept of traveling. In the past, Ash and his friends used to travel from town to town while encountering new people, new environments and new Pokemon throughout their journey. But with both Sun and Moon and Journeys, Ash had some sort of headquarters or main place to stay where he constantly returned after he traveled to another location. In Sun the moon it was Mele Mele Island and the school, while in Journeys it was the Kanto region and more specifically the Sakuragi institution. But what is exactly the problem with Ash returning to a main location instead of going from town to town? That's pretty simple. Because Ash always had a specific place of return, that always meant that a lot of the plot took place in that exact location, therefore limiting not only Ash's overall adventure but 
also making the anime as a whole feel very stagnating and boring because we see so many episodes and so many slice of life in just one location over and over and over again. Whereas in the past, you at least were able to witness different kind of locations and variety of people and Pokemon by just changing the environment. Journeys constantly taking place in the same location while also doing nothing else but filler episodes was a reason amongst many why people lost interest in the Gen 8 anime as a whole. So after everything I just mentioned, we now have to return to the topic of this video. Is Pokemon XY the true ending of the Pokemon anime? Well, from a mere continuation point of view, of course it wasn't, since even after XY, Ash still continued his journey and achieved many things. But I will say that XY truly was the end of the Pokemon anime that we all knew and grew up with. It was the last of a kind that had the traditional format and everything we were used to. And since then, the Pokemon company tried to experiment a lot with the gens coming after it. And needless to say, sometimes the changes were successful, but sadly, a lot of times they weren't. I have to applaud the anime for at least trying new things, but in my opinion they tried so many things all at once, resulting in changing the anime beyond recognition, which led to alienating a lot of the fanbase. Changes don't always have to be negative and sometimes can lead to good things, but in this case, maybe it would have been better to at least keep some of the old traditions that we loved in the past. And because it was the last time the Pokemon anime really felt like the Pokemon anime, I think we can at least agree on this, that Pokemon XY truly was the end of an era for the Annie Poker franchise. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. What is your opinion? Tell me and just like always, see you guys in the comments down below. Bye guys!